Well, hello, everybody. I want to start by welcoming you guys to our online message. This is kind of week two of our online series. Uh, and I want to start, first of all, by just saying we're praying for you. Uh, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged that you can't be meeting together. Uh, I get it. God has built us for relationship. He's built us to love other people. When we're stuck at home, it can be hard. Uh, we understand that. We're doing our best to connect with you guys. Uh, we're kind of trying to come up with some other ways that we can meet, whether it be through uh, different apps online where we can have online gatherings. Uh, we don't know what it's going to look like moving forward, but we want to encourage you that we are here for you. If you need something, give us a call. Uh, we are praying for all of you, and we're going to get through this. Uh, this is not the end. Uh, this is the beginning. And, and I want to also encourage you that uh, church isn't something you just listen to. I've said this many times, but it's not just something that you listen to. It's something that you're part of. So if you can't be with people, uh, if you're self-isolating right now, I want to encourage you to still ask yourself, how can I still connect with people? Uh, we've got a church directory. Feel free to call people up and say, hey, how can I pray for you? How can I bless you? Uh, what do you need in life? Or just to sit back and, and connect with people, pray with your family, use this time to get really close to God. So I'm glad you tuned in. I'm glad you're going to listen to this message. I think I think the Bible says that God has called some of us to preach and to teach, and that's part of my calling. Uh, but uh, So I'm glad that you're tuning in, but I also want to encourage you to ask yourself, what is your calling, uh, and how can you still make make a difference in a world that is currently in self-isolation. So that's how I want to start. The second thing I want to do is I think we need to start all the time by praying. And so I've prayed for hours before I plan these messages. I put a lot of work into them, a lot of prayer into them. But what I want to do is I want to actually say a prayer right now, uh, a prayer for the person watching. Uh, so as I pray this, uh, you don't have to repeat after me, but maybe you just want to agree with the words that I'm saying as you quiet your heart and get ready to ask yourself uh, uh, what God has for you and to really be sensitive to what God is trying to do in your life to bring you freedom, to bring you victory, and to bring you love and joy and peace. So I'm going to do a prayer uh, as though I'm simply one of you watching the message and, and you can pray along with me. So let's just pray. God, you are awesome. God, I trust that you're going to get me through this hard time. God, I trust that you're going to get me through this self-isolation or any uncertainty that, that is coming. So God, right now, as I focus on what your plan is for my life, as I focus on how you are going to bring me freedom, as I believe in faith that you are going to bring me love and joy and peace, help me to hear what you would have me to hear. Help me to be sensitive to what, what's being said and help me to really, really take it to heart. And finally, God, how can I show your love to the world around me, even as I self-isolate? How can I be part of the body, even from home? Thank you for your guidance, God. I love you so much. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get started uh, on the message. And the first thing I like to do, especially when the message is tied together, is that we're going to talk about, just quickly review what I talked about last week. And last week's message was simple. In this time of uncertainty, in this time where people are afraid, they're questioning where God is and if God is there for them, uh, there are people who, who just don't understand. And the message last week was this, you are loved by God. God is not going to love you more or less no matter what you do. You are his child. And just like I love my children, no matter what, God loves you no matter what. You can't earn any more of his love. You can simply accept it. You can accept it and then live a life that, that, that you want to honor the love that he's given you. But that doesn't mean he's going to love you more. You are loved and cared for as a child of the King of Kings. And that was, that was simply the message. You're loved. I'm loved. We are all loved. And the problem is, is that when we hear a message like that, as encouraging as it is to know that I can't earn God's love, the question inevitably is going to come up. If God loves me so much, why am I dealing with all the stuff that I'm dealing with? And yeah, we're talking about COVID-19, but we're not just talking about COVID-19. Let's be real. Let's be honest and real with each other. Most of us are dealing with something in our life, whether or not COVID-19 was around. Whether it's the fact that you're having a hard time making friends and you just don't get why you're having a hard time making friends. Maybe you were having a hard time fitting in church even when we were meeting together as a group. Maybe you're dealing with problems in your marriage. Maybe you're dealing with jealousy. Maybe you're dealing with feelings of inadequacy. Maybe you're dealing with anxiety and depression. Doesn't matter what you're dealing with, the question still remains, where is God in all of this? If God loves me so much, why am I, why am I going through this? 
And often these feelings are simply amplified in a time of crisis. And so I think as I've prayed this through and I've asked God for answers and I've read the Bible, you know, and I'm looking for those answers, I think the answer comes in uh, quite simply in that we might, we might hear that God loves us, but until we truly know how God feels about us, as we study the word and we truly accept how God feels about us, we are susceptible to the lies of the world, we are susceptible to the lies of others, and we're susceptible to the lies of the devil. And that's actually, at the end of the day, that's what is knocking us down. And I'm going to give you some examples of that, just real simple, kind of easy examples. You know, when you meet somebody who's who's maybe a sibling, you know, who grew up and, and their siblings thrived at everything and they didn't thrive quite as much. And so they believed this lie that they weren't as good as the people around them. And then maybe they saw those people get praised. And all of a sudden they start saying, man, I'm not really that cool. I'm not that good. I'm not, I'm not as pretty or I'm not as handsome. I'm not as smart as I'm not as athletic. And eventually this lie creeps into our mind, whether it's from the world or from the devil. And the lie is this, you will never live up. You will never be as good as so-and-so. You will never be as good a Christian as this. And, and what that does is it turns into the lie that says God won't love you as much as he loves, you know, Pastor Rick. You're not going to be a pastor. God loves Pastor Rick more than you. And that's, that's a lie. And, and last week we talked about God loves you unconditionally. You're not going to earn more of God's love. And that's why we said it because so many people have bought into this lie. I see people all the time who, 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 things have happened in their life, whether they were growing up, whether it's been as adults, and it has twisted the way they view the world, and, and the world and the devil have lied to them, and they've believed the lie, and so you've got people who are jealous because they feel like, they feel like they've been hurt by somebody who should have loved them, and, you know, maybe a parent left and, and, and took off, and now they feel like, man, what, what if somebody else does that to me? And so jealousy comes up the moment they see affection being given to other people. I already talked about anxiety because they'll never live up. Maybe you've had super, super strict parents or parents who, you know, you got 95% right on an exam and they want to know how could you get that 5% wrong? And you begin to believe that you're never going to be good enough because even at 99%, you were not good enough. And the devil begins to whisper in your ear and say, that's exactly what God thinks. You're a good Christian, but you're not a perfect Christian. You're not good enough. And it's a lie. God loves you. Yes, we should always be pursuing being better. We should always try and get closer in our relationship with God. But God loves you through it all. And anything else is a lie. And it, and it reminds me over and over and over again about how the Bible clearly says that the devil is the father of lies. We're going to read something today. It's, it's in, in John chapter 8, verses 43 and 44. And here's what it says, folks. It says, why is my language not clear to you? He's talking to the Pharisees. He's talking to the religious leaders who thought somehow that because of their ancestry that they were good with God. And he says, why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He's a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and he is the father of lies. You see, the devil wants nothing more than for you to live in bondage. He wants nothing more for you to live in bondage instead of living in the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. See, when you live in the grace of Jesus, where God says that he gives you, grace is giving you what you don't deserve. God wants to give you gives you a future that you don't deserve, a hope. He wants to give you the fruit of the Spirit. He wants to give you blessings in your life that you don't necessarily deserve because you can never deserve them. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You'll never be good enough, but you don't have to be. That's the incredible story of Jesus Christ, that God loves you unconditionally. And even though you're not perfect and you will never be perfect till you get to heaven, God loves you. And he wants to walk you through life. God is there for you. And so why are these things happening? I think often these things are happening because we buy into the lies of the devil. I'm reminded of the story in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. And in this story in Genesis 3, 1 to 7, here's what happens. The serpent comes to tempt Eve. And Eve is in the garden and the first thing he says is, 
Did God really say you can't eat from all of these trees? And, and this is part of the lie. The first thing, and that lie has a, has a suggestion, and the suggestion of that lie is, did God really give you all of this stuff to tempt you, but tell you you can't have it? Did he, is he not going to provide any food for you? Well, that was clearly a lie. And he's like, no, I can eat all of these trees. These are all God's blessings in my life. I just can't eat from that one. So then the devil takes a different tactic. He says, really? Well, if you eat from this tree, you will be wise like God. And essentially what he's telling Eve, and, the, and kind of again the suggestion in here is that God made you insufficient, and God is withholding blessings from you, and if you want to be as good and as wise as God, you can eat from this. And it tore down how she saw herself, like somehow, oh, wait a minute, are you saying I'm not good enough? I need this to be better? And then the second lie was that God was keeping her from being as good as she could be. And so the devil came in through the serpent and he lied to her about who God was and who she was in God. And she bought into the lie and the world became broken because of sin. And now we live in this broken world where bad things happen to good people and to bad people because the world is broken. And some of you just need to hear that. The world is broken, but there's a better place. There's going to be heaven that's not broken. That's perfect. But while we're on earth, God still has a plan for your life. And so don't, don't be like Eve, where you buy into the lie. Lies told to you by the devil. Lies told to you by your parents. Lies told to you by yourself uh, through the experiences that you went through. Don't listen to the lies. Instead, ask yourself, who am I? Not based on how I feel. Who am I based on who God calls me to be? Who has God made me to be? We talked about this last week when we, when we talked about the passage in, I believe it's Psalms 139, 13. Uh, there's, a whole, there's a whole section there that you can actually read. The whole, the whole chapter is really awesome. We read it a bit last week, but it says, God knew you in your mother's womb. Your days were written. He's got a plan. He's got a dream. He's got a hope for you. Even the Israelites who were in captivity, uh, they'd been in captivity, and we see in Jeremiah 29, 11, that even though bad things are happening right now to them in, the, in that passage, Jeremiah says, but for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Goes on to say, and you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You see, the devil says that you're never gonna you're never gonna find hope. The devil says that you're never gonna find peace. The devil says that you're gonna be caught in this anxiety, you're gonna be caught in this stress for the long haul. The devil says that you're not gonna ever overcome the financial crisis that's coming because of COVID-19. The devil's gonna tell you lies, and those lies are either gonna tear down who God is, or they're gonna tear down who you are. And so the most important thing that we can do in life is first of all, we gotta recognize the truth, and we gotta recognize the lies. And it reminds me of that story, and I've told it before, the story of how they capture elephants. You know how they find a baby elephant and they, they, they tie that elephant up and, they, and they, they put a stake in the ground and that elephant can't get away because it's just a small little elephant. And how an elephant hears that, you know, learns that, about, you know, people say that, you know, an elephant never forgets. And so the elephant remembers that it can't break free from that captivity. And even, even once, it, once the elephant has the capacity, when he's like thousands of pounds and could snap the, the rope, a chain, and everybody around him, it doesn't fight back. And many of us got into captivity just like that as children. We, 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 we heard something, we experienced something, and it clouded our vision. And now we've come to know Jesus Christ. We have the power of Jesus Christ. We are giants of God. We are warriors of God. Like, they, like the angel said to Gideon, rise, you mighty warrior, as he's in hiding. Rise, you mighty warrior. God has made us warriors. And just like that big elephant, we don't realize the power that we have. And so we listen to the lie. We continue to live the lie. And we continue to live in captivity and in bondage. So I want to give you a couple examples this morning of the lies that people believe. What I want to do is I'm not going to give you all the answers right away, but instead what I'm going to do is when, when, when we're done talking, when this whole thing's done, I'm going to put a, a list of verses on the side of the screen there, and I want you to look at the lies and then look at, look at, the, look at the answer. Because here's the deal. The best way to know the truth, 
The easiest way to identify the truth is to identify to identify a lie is to recognize the truth. You know, if you put if you put two Picasso paintings in front of me and said which one is the real painting and which one's the forgery, I couldn't tell the difference. Not because I'm not a smart guy, because I do, I have no experience with art. I'm not like that. I don't know those artists. But but an art collector would tell you right away is because they know it intimately. They know what a Picasso looks like, so they know what a fake looks like. You go to a banker, and, and we had we had some fake money, or we thought we had some some forgeries the other a while back, and and the what it was, it was newer money. And and, and the girls at the patio grill, they were they were handling this. Whoa, this doesn't feel like money. It doesn't feel like the truth. And you can recognize the forgery when you recognize the truth. And you will always recognize the lies of the devil when you recognize the truth of Scripture. And so what we got to do is we got to begin to read and study and live the truth of Scripture and know the truth of Scripture so that we can overcome those lies of the devil. And actually, probably as we move forward, we might actually spend a couple more weeks on how to get victory, what that might look like. But I want to give you a couple examples right now of, of what that could look like. So number one, God won't get you through this. God isn't going to get you through. You're hearing this lie. This financial crisis is going to kill me. This financial crisis is going to absolutely destroy me. I'm going to get laid off. I'm going to have nothing. My hope is gone. This isn't going to work. So how do you fight that lie? Number one, you read some of the Bible stories. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a list of some of the characters that, that that didn't think they could do it, and God gave them victory. Characters like Gideon, God's not gonna get you through it. Sure he is. Read the stories. I'm gonna give there's the stories that you can read, and then there's some verses that say God promises to get you through it. How about this? You're not strong enough to overcome what you're going through. Maybe you've got an addiction, maybe you've got a, a problem. But when you read through the passage of the armor of God, you realize that you will get through it. When you realize Paul talk about the thorn in his flesh and how in his weakness he is strong, you recognize that you're going you're gonna to get through this. You are good enough because God has called you. And so the best way to identify the lie is to focus on the truth. And so my challenge for you this week is to spend some time in the Word, spend some time reading some of the Scripture that we put on the side here. And, and the two questions that I want you to ask yourself is, number one, what are some of the lies that I've believed? So whether you've got self-worth issues, I want you to ask yourself, where did they come from? When did I start believing those lies? Identify those times and then ask yourself this question, how did God see me compared to how other people saw me? So if your self-worth issues are based on how you were treated as a kid, sure, ask yourself, how did mom and dad treat me? How did my brothers and sisters treat me? How did they feel about me? And then ask yourself the second question, is that what the Bible says God feels about me? And begin to identify the times in your life where you've been broken and then identify the truth of Scripture that says, actually, that's not true. God says that I am a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God says that I am a mighty warrior like Gideon. God says this. And, and, and identify those situations and then pray against them. You know, in the name of Jesus, I want to take that situation of when I was a child, when I was rejected, when I when I was when a teacher made me feel like a failure at school, and I want to I want to reject that right now. I want to identify that situation. And God, I know in that moment you saw me as a child who was simply learning. That you love me unconditionally. And as you begin to identify the, the kind of the curses in your life, if you would, they're not real curses, but the things that tore you down. When you identify the change, chains that you were captive with, the, 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 the quicksand that got you stuck, actually identify those moments and then give them to Jesus and say, how does God, how did you feel about me in those moments? And if you're doing this with a group of people, maybe do it with them. Let people know, be honest, be vulnerable. Say, hey, I, I really felt like I would never live up in my life. I still sometimes feel like my parents think that I'll never be a good enough Christian or or, or my brothers are, say this or my friends think this and say, hey, is that what God thinks of me? So we're going to give a bunch of verses how, how God sees you and I want you to read them because that's going to lead into next week. Next week's the entire message is going to be about how does God see me? How does God see people? What's God's view of mankind? What's God's view of me as a person? And I think as we begin to identify some of this stuff, we're going to begin to have some freedom in our lives. 
And I think that freedom is going to, that freedom when we accept the grace of God and we live in that grace, that we don't have to worry about being worthy, we have to worry about being loved. And we don't have to worry about that at all, because God always loves us. And I think when we begin to recognize that, we will actually become more holy. We'll actually end up working harder to be better. Not because we have to, but because we want to honor the incredible gift of grace that God has given us. Guys, I want to let you know God loves you. And if you've bought into a lie, I want you to give that to Jesus right now. I want you to confess of that lie. I want you to give that up. And I want you to hold on to the truth of who God is. And so we're going we're gonna to wrap this up today. I'm going to close in prayer. Then I'm going to put those passages up there. I'm going to put some questions for you guys. Ask yourself those questions. Work, your, work through that uh, and move to, to, to understanding who God made you to be. And I look forward to what the future has for our church. And uh, I just want to thank you for tuning in. So let's, let's just close in prayer. God, help me to recognize the lies that I have bought into. Help me to recognize them right now. Help me to give them to you. Show me the moments in my life that were life-changing moments in how I treat myself, how I feel about myself, my emotional well-being. Help me identify when those changes happen so I can give those over to you and that I can live victorious victorious as you would have me to be. Help me to live in that grace of God so I can strive to be more holy, to honor your incredible gift. I love you, Jesus. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless. Go through that stuff. Have a great week. Uh, and another thing is we're working with people. There's a lot of ways that we can connect. If you're really going through something right now, uh, we can FaceTime. We can do a lot of extra stuff for you uh, to walk you to freedom. So if this triggered something in you this week, uh, feel free to contact the church and we can help you uh, walk your way to victory. So see you next week.